Alrighty, time for a quick AP Chem crash course. Hello everybody, I'm Karan, and today we're going to be talking about chemical reaction kinetics. Okay, let us get into it really quick. So basically, you can think about kinetics as, it means motion, right? Kinetics, like kinetic energy, you know what I'm saying? It's motion. So it doesn't tell you anything about the current state of the thing, it just tells you the speed at which the reactions happen, okay? Nothing else. So don't even think about writing equations when it comes to kinetics. The only thing you do is determine an expression for the rate. So basically what kinetics lets you do is if you have A plus B goes to C, you can determine the rate of the reactor. In other words, it's the rate at which the moles change. So if it's like a rate that the moles change, just like a rate that position changes meters per second, it's moles changing, so it's moles per second. So essentially your rate of reaction is how fast these moles are changing and that's why it's always going to be like this. Another thing that kinetics lets you say is that the rate of reaction can be written as K times A times B and then to the N and to the N. Now remember that M and N do not depend directly on the equation unless it's an elementary equation, okay? Unless they explicitly say that it's elementary, you cannot use the coefficients to determine the rate law. So let's go through the different parts, okay? This over here is the rate constant. It's only dependent on temperature, okay? That's why it's called a constant. It doesn't change if temperature remains the same. This over here is concentration of A. This over here is the order of A with respect to A. This is the order with respect to B. If you want the overall reaction order, you add N plus N. Okay, cool. So one of the most annoying problems that you'll get in uh, kinetics problems is like you'll get a table and then they'll give you different rates of reaction. So basically this is how the table looks and basically what you want to do is you want to find the orders of the different reactions. So basically like if you want to do it the really easy way, the straightforward way, you don't have to think at all. What I like to do is I just like to write out the equation. So you basically have that 0 0.5 and basically you can ignore k because the constant gets cancelled out regardless of how you do it. So the rate is equal to the constant which we ignore times the concentration to the m times the other concentration to the n and then you just write all the equations. Alright, and then basically in order to solve for m or n you can just divide them to cancel stuff out like if you divide the first one by the second one you cancel this out and you're only left with n and same for like 1 and 3 you can cancel out this. Now that is really slow because that's like a waste of time so only if you have extra time and you want to check your answer that's a really good way. It's guaranteed that you won't mess up the question if you check your answer using the equation. But of course the better way is to find where the a is the same and then compare the b's. So in this case the a's are the same so we don't have to worry about that. Always look for the same thing. Then b gets multiplied by 2 but a rate also gets multiplied by 2. 2 to the first power is 2 so b is first order. Same with a. Except this time it goes from b being the same in first and third and then a gets multiplied by 2 but rate gets multiplied by 4 so 2 squared is 4 so second order. All right. Now, this is a hard part to memorize, okay? This is like the one thing that a lot of people have a hard time remembering after not hearing it for a really long time. So this is just how to determine it from graph. Now, my teacher liked to use karate chops to remember this, but honestly, I did not remember it at all because she was just like, A, L and A, one over A, and I don't remember what that means. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna think of an even better way of remembering it. So basically the fundamental thing that you got to remember, this is not going to be like a trick or anything, but like you have to remember that the order is A, L and A, 1 over A. Somehow, you have to remember that this is the order somehow, and then basically what this shows you is when you have to look out for a line. So if it's 0 is order, you have to look for a line in the graph of a versus time. This would be zeroth order because it's first and it would have a straight line. And then in this case, if it was first order, then you move on from zeroth to the next one and it would look like this and it's first order. And then one over a would look like this and it'd be second order and these will be on the y axis. But basically, I'm not giving you a good way to remember this yet. So how are we going to remember it, okay? Okay, the way I like to remember it is like a is just normal, doesn't like you don't have to apply any functions to it, it's just straight up concentration of a. That makes sense, right? zero the no functions apply to it so you don't need to worry about anything zero is a super simple don't even think about it okay and then the next one is going to be first order ln a now the way i remember that ln a is before one over a is because if you think about derivatives the derivative of ln a is one over a so like it makes sense that ln a is going to be before it. another way you could remember it is like if you write them all next to each other there's an allen in it dude look allen there's a name hidden in there. Okay, I know there's not an A there, but look, it's like an Allen, okay? So, essentially, your, like, ordering should end up looking like this. Allen A over A. Whoa, that's biggest brain. Another way you can think about it, 
you don't want these two guys to cancel out, do you, huh? So you had to keep them separated on opposite sides of the L and A. Now I know these are really stupid ways to remember it, but like really the stupidest things are the things that keep it in your head the best. L and A over A. Just remember that. L and A over A. Dude, okay, by the end of this video, you are guaranteed to have that memorized, okay? L and A over A, you can't forget that. Dude, I have a friend named Alan. If only his last name was A over A, then I would not forget. Guaranteed, okay? It's not gonna happen. Okay, one last thing you gotta know about chemical kinetics, chemical reaction kinetics, is that the only special function or the only special order that you gotta worry about is first order, okay? First order is the only guy that's cool because the half-life does not change over time. It's pretty cool. See, I even wrote it in all caps so you'd remember. But like the way that I like to remember it is if you could remember that first order is LNA using my epic tricks that I showed you, dude, there's no way you forget. There's no way. There's literally no way. But if you remember that it's LNA, right? LNA has to do with exponential fu functions, right? And you know that exponential functions have a half-life. Like, if you've ever learned anything about radioactive decay, the one thing you can remember is that it has a half-life. So, because first order has LNA in it, has to do with exponential, it got to do with decay, so it got to have a half-life. Epic. Now, there is one formula you've got to remember. LN2 over K is equal to your half-life. Now, the way I like to remember it, like, the only way that I could possibly remember it is I know that well, a half-life has a 2 in it, right? So there has to be a 2 somewhere. I don't know where. But I also know that I have to have an LN because half-life has to do with LN. So we got an LN and we got a 2. How else are we going to combine them? Then putting LN and 2 together, this is so big brain. So now you got LN and 2 together, you divide by K and you get your half-life. Now how do you know that you had to divide by K? Think about it, right? K has the units of 1 over seconds for a first order reaction, right? Because if you have K times concentration is equal to moles per second. We know that, or moles, molarity, molarity per second. You get what I mean, molarity per second. Then you divide over here, you get rid of that, so K is just one over S. So it makes sense that if you plug it in here, if you wanted units of seconds for time, you gotta divide by K. So now you got LN2 over K, very cool stuff. Basically, my tip for you guys to memorize stuff is just to come up with a bunch of random associations, even if they're not like associations that you already know, because then you'll actually remember those things better too. Alrighty, that's all I got. I will talk about how to use elementary reactions in order to get your final rate law in a different video, because we had to first cover equilibrium stuff, so let's do that next time. Alrighty, I've ranted on for long enough. That's what you got for kinetics. Thank you guys for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching again, and see you guys next time.